OK, so today we're going to calculate a Taylor polynomial for four terms at the point zero for the function cosine of x. So when calculating the Taylor polynomial, what you want to know is the degree or there's the value of n, so the degree n. So in our case here, four terms, so degree four. Point a, in this case it's zero. And the function, as we can see, is cosine. So that clears it up what we've got to start with. And here we've got the generic formula for Taylor polynomial. Uh, Tn of x, the value at a, well in our case it's 0. Then the first derivative over 1 factorial times x minus a to the power of 1. And then the second term, you can see there's a pattern form in here. The second derivative for a over 2 factorial, x minus a squared. So these 3s and 2s and 1s all match up. So you've got a 3, 3 factorial to power 3, 4, 4 factorial to power 4. And so on and so on. That's inclusive all the way up for n, n over n factorial to the power of n. And these a's, these a's here, we're calculating the zero. So x minus a cubed would just be x cubed. And three factorial, four factorial, we know what that is. That's one times two times three times four and so on up to the number we want to calculate the factorial number for. Okay, so what do we do now? So Good to break it down into simple steps. So we're going to differentiate the function cosine four times and the values of each of those derivatives at zero. So break it down to a nice little table one step at a time. And cosine is a nice one to uh, take the derivative off because there's a nice little pattern. So your function is cosine. First of all, calculate the value of cosine at zero. And cosine of zero is one. So that's straightforward. Next, we will take the derivative of cosine, and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. And sine of zero is zero, so minus sine zero is zero. So the first derivative is zero. Then for the second derivative, we need to take the derivative of the first derivative. So the derivative of minus sine of x is minus cosine of x. You could also say the deriv derivative of sine of x is cosine of x, and then put a minus in front of it. Is like a constant multiple of minus 1, you end up with minus cosine of x. And we know that cosine of 0 is 1, so minus cosine of 0 is minus 1. So that's the second derivative taken care of. Then we've got the third derivative. So the third derivative, we take the derivative of minus cosine of x to get the third derivative. So the derivative of cosine, we'd already worked that out, which is minus sine. Well, the derivative of minus cosine is then going to be plus sine. So the value of sine 0 is 0. And then the fourth derivative, we take the derivative of the third one, which is sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine, which had already worked out here with the minuses. So the fourth derivative, cosine of 0, is 1. So we're back to the original value of our function. And there will be a pattern all the way down 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way through. That the fifth derivative will be the same as the first derivative, the sixth derivative will be the same as the second, the seventh same as the third, eighth same as the fourth, and so on. So now we've got all these values, we go ahead and plug them into the Taylor polynomial formula. So we've substituted the a's in here, and the a is zero. So basically the function at zero, which we calculated was one, so that would just be a one in there. First derivative over 1 factorial, so that 0 would be over 1 factorial. Second derivative is minus 1, so we just put the minus 1 in there. Third derivative is 0, so we put the 0 in there. And the fourth derivative is 1, so we put the 1 in there. And these x minus zeros will disappear. They'll just become x cubes, x to the fourth, x squared, and simple x's. So that will simplify that. So this is what we'll end up with at the next stage. So the Taylor polynomial of degree 4 at point 0 for cosine is 1, because f of 0 is 1. Now the, the single x had disappeared because the first derivative, which we calculated here, was 0. So this first term disappears. The second derivative is minus 1. So we put in a minus 1 here for this uh, second derivative, which would then flip the sign from positive to negative, and then x squared. And then over 2 factorial, which, which is fine. So minus x squared over 2 factorial. And as before, the third derivative we saw here was 0. 
So then we put 0 over 3 factorial becomes 0, so that cancels out all of this. And then the fourth term, which is 1, just put in a 1 there over 4 factorial, and that becomes x to the power of 4. So basically x to the 4 over 4 factorial, which we know is 24. So that's our Taylor polynomial of degree 4 at point 0 for cosine is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4 over 4 factorial. And now just to check our result, we can put that in a graph and just see how close we are to the original function. So at point 0, this is the point we were interested in at x equals 0. So there we go, it all goes centers around 1 there, so it's pretty accurate. And it follows it all the way down here, close to pi over 2, which would be here, and then minus pi over 2, which would be here. And the solid black line, that is our Taylor polynomial. And the dotted line, that is the real graph of cosine. So you can see once it gets past pi over 2, then it starts to separate and go a little bit different and same for negative and, and positive pi over 2 but at the point 0 which we was interested in it's very accurate so we can confirm that our calculations for the Taylor polynomial are pretty spot on so there we go that's our answer and then you're done okay thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe thanks very much